All right, hello everyone. My name is Dean Chessman, and today I'm going to be showing you this new tool that I built uh, that I'm calling Dean's Blob Tracker. And I'm going to walk through the different features of it and also talk about some of the things that makes it a little special. Okay, so um, you can see here this output is actually tied together with uh, my motion tracer tool that I also have released. These tools are available to my Patreon supporters. And uh, if you want to learn how to make these from scratch, I also have tutorials on how to get these effects from scratch as well. The tools are if you want to have kind of a pre-made tool with some extra parameters and things built in to, to have that tool available quicker for you and your projects. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, I'm actually going to get rid of my, my tracer for now and just show what this blob tracker can do. Okay, so first of all, in the tab, first tab, you'll see there's the three options here. I'm going to turn them all off for now. Um, and you can see right now I'm not including the input. If I want to include the input so that the, um, so what's, what's input comes out of the output of the tool, I can toggle that on and off. Second, I can turn on my boxes. So let's go into the boxes tab to look at the settings there. So the first option, motion threshold, threshold kind of selects, you know, how, how much motion I want to include with the boxes themselves. So these first two we're gonna, are gonna affect how many boxes I'm getting. So I get both the motion threshold and then the number of boxes. So I can turn this all the way up and really you know, pump down what the threshold is for motion. Um, and playing with these, I can get a nice balance um, of, of number of boxes. Uh, the next option here is to switch between whether I want the box to be a line or filled in. Um, so I can have first my, my line that I can affect my stroke width. Also the color and alpha. Um, that went on the other screen. So I can change my color here. I can also change my alpha down. So if I want it to be like 50%, have it a little more subtle. And then if I switch to fill, I can also have, you know, uh, some nice color that's filling into a box on top. Um, yeah. The next is my, uh, the amount of variability and the size of the boxes that I want. So I can pump up my scale. So sorry, let me bring this back up to one. I can pump up the size of my boxes and I can also change the variability of the sizes of the box. So. So I can do really small with a lot of variability or, you know, have them all the same size. Okay. The next, uh, I can go back into my first tab and turn on my text. So these are the little labels that I can have on. I can change the alignment of my text. So if I want it on the top of the boxes, maybe on the left side, um, you know, or bottom out the right. So it's labeled off the bottom right side or you can center them both. Um, it's a little hard to see when it's moving super fast when I have lots of blobs kind of moving around. Let's see if I can adjust that a little bit. Okay. The other things I can do, uh, I can change my font. So I can go in here and uh, I usually like to do something a little more digital looking like a courier. Um, something monospaced. Uh, also the size and uh, the font color. Um, okay, so that's that's all my options for, for my tracker. The other things that you can get out of this, so you get obviously the output um, of the effect, but also if you want, you can, uh, this chop output will give you the U and V locations and the width and heights of all the boxes. So if you wanna maybe use this to instance something else, like maybe uh, a texture instancing or um, maybe if you want to make circles or triangles or another shape, you could use this to, to put into your own uh, instancing network to, to make that go out. One of the other things about this, this project that I'm super stoked about is that it's super efficient. Um, so if you know, like most blob tracking, I left this in here just so I could show, but as I was building this, um, I had a regular blob tracker in here that was uh, tracking tracking blobs. And you know, when the calculation for a blob track, you know, here you can see it's going about five milliseconds. Uh, but my my blob tracker that I've made for this, it gets it down to about half a second. So if I pause these, you can kind of see it better. So, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.3 versus seven seconds or three or three seconds. So it's quite a bit more efficient. Um, it's not going to be tracking kind of continual movement of blobs quite the same way the blob tracker was. So if you want that really smooth blob tracking, you're not going to quite get this with this. Um, but I uh, maybe I'll add that in here as an option if you want to switch between the two. 
And I will do a tutorial coming up on how I did this blob tracker uh, in the future. So you can, you can learn how to do that on your own as well. Okay, uh, that'll be it. If you want to get access to this tool, like I said, you can join my Patreon page. I'm going to be building more tools and also including all my project files for my tutorials uh, to my Patreon, Patreon supporters. Uh, thanks a bunch.